recording and do the zoom. Uh, Rashad told me, but then uh, Mike can already turn it off. Or someone in the rest of this. I think it was Mike. Being recorded. <laughs> Okay, the idea was today we're going to start actually getting into the details of build optimization, build detail, uh, looking at procedure from A to Z, counting up doing accounting, which is what are the materials, what are the steps, what are the costs for everything involved if someone wants to run the enterprise. So. As a builder, whether it's a builder, solopreneur, manager, we start with the basic step by step. It includes getting into CAD and all the assets that are supporting, bills of materials, everything else. So, um, are you working on the link for us? Yeah, I'm creating one. Okay, so create one. We were looking at build instructions that seeds, <coughs> build instructions seeds, uh, item number 14, seed home V2, build instructions seeds uh, a fabrication diagram which goes through a lot of different steps we can pick. I'm uh, going to edit of that. Um, let me share. We can pick from some of the steps that we already know, and that they're kind of written out. And what we want to do is go through uh, the gory detail. Of ironing everything out. Okay, so, um, Christian, let, let us know when you, you got the, the docs so we can collaboratively edit that. Um, This is a visual representation like earthworks, foundation, walls, stairs, second story, uh, inner walls, interior. I mean, it's all, it's kind of a, not sure, a diagram. But we want to break down into as many single steps, uh, break down the work into as many single steps as possible and, and get detail on each. So I think the spreadsheet actually, if it's a spreadsheet that goes from A to Z, like 100 or 200 steps, that would get you part of a way where you have, um, it makes you think, it makes you think, okay, what's the first thing you do? If that spreadsheet can be organized, I would suggest the spreadsheet as in, you can drag columns up and down in order uh, to show order. So if, as, as we develop the spreadsheet, we can um, use it for extracting like sequential stuff too, because it can be, organized temporarily. 
as well. Yep. You get a point for that. Open up for access, so open and editable. Okay. Uh, refresh. Okay. So so step, um, let's say materials, tools, I mean it could be any number of people, I mean we, let's, let's get rid of that for now, um, let's define what those steps, things, the allocation of roles, that will be a, I think a subsequent step of what we do with uh, right? I mean, we can, uh, like as far as allocating how many people are doing things, that's more of the workflow uh, thing that comes out of after we itemize everything that's on our shopping list of steps. Because it depends on what you're doing. Do you have one person doing it? Do you have a whole team? Sure, right? it's in hours, I guess. Say again? Any set uh, production phase could be just in hours. So you have to say person hours, because if you got two people, that's half. Yeah. So you say person hours required to do it, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, cost. Uh, materials, maybe we do. We can have a. What's the best way to today? Can we do multiple columns or just like list? You can do um, items that have hyperlinks in them for materials, so you can you can link directly to them, so that this spreadsheet becomes really rich. Let's see. So, um, C go home too. So we'll see go home. Um, build procedures. Okay. In another window, open up this thing. So let's just start populating it with as much as And then we can take each step and break it down. We, sh we should do it, like as far as the steps themselves, break it down as atomically as we can. Uh, we can, I think atomically to the lowest, to, to the most detailed level possible is what we're going to go. We wouldn't say like, oh, do the foundation. Well, start more detail, like break it down to the foundation means you lay up stakes, if you measure, like let's let's do that. Um, so that um, we can study it and, and go forward. So for example, we can link to, as far as the, the data that we have, so okay, materials, tools, cost, person hours, uh, improvements, before improvements we can say, um, well, video documentation, like from the documentation, we can look at uh, the improvements needed. So, video documentation is something we can study and and then think about improvements on it. Um, okay, so let's start populating it. So, uh, we're going to um, like the foundation first, the whole thing? Or yeah, we're going to break it down. Break it down, like as granular as possible. We can, we can then go, well, we can say like, because before you got a foundation, you got site selection and <laughs> site, site clearing. So site, um, site prep, we can do like broad categories. There's site prep. Um, you can say foundation. Um, I mean, broad categories would be like walls. Roof. And 
computer, Cyprap, what, what else, what goes in Cyprap? How do you do Cyprap? You can, let's do this like, uh, do this in this car and then the V goes with that. Let's let's start from the step of we we assume we have a, a site selected, so we're just building. So site prep is okay. You got to clear. Um, clear site. Uh, what are you clearing? Vegetation, rocks. No. Prepare for concrete for uh, I don't know this moment cases, but that's the end goal. Mm-hmm. So yep. So every so, so keep going. So go. Let's go insert. Keep going. So so write write things in there. So and you see like how you can drop, drag and drop things. So as long as you can get the things in there, we can then arrange them in order. Um, the number of things and arrange things order, in order. Um, Say the Bobcat, typically the Bobcat tractor, some kind of a tractor device. Um, uh, excavator, if you're pulling up stumps, let's say. But say we find a, I mean, any kind of urban or rural or somewhere, I mean, you can have all these things happen, so you kind of have to know about it. You know, I mean, the cost will depend from. Uh, In a specific, what's the most, we should probably focus on what's the most specific instance that we're likely to get into, which would be, okay, as, you know, next step is city lot. Some city, well, some kind of customer lot, wherever it is. Uh, right now, we should maybe focus on, okay, it's around Kansas City. Maybe we work, work the one, the lot that Brian has, that is looking at. Maybe we snap it up. That's, that's a likely proposition at this point. We're looking at it. And one, one avenue that we can go is actually buy it and develop it and just go with that regardless of whether Brian is a customer or not. Uh, I mean, there's a little bit of risk in that situation. We can't just assume, oh, Brian is actually going to do it. Uh, we, it's early in the game. We talked about, yeah, intent and things like that. But there's a lot, of, a lot of steps in between to do that. Um, Mark site, Mark, um, you got to do, when you do the site, before that, you actually want to have a site plan. So probably uh, before anything, site plan. Like you got to have a little document, um, site plan, what you're actually trying to accomplish there. Isn't that the house drawing, or, or is it anything else? They'll have more than a house, because there's utilities, mm -hmm. yeah. maybe a pond, mm -hmm. like driveway. So site, aren't site plan. One, aren't they the same from the city Can't be. Okay. No, you can't, because it's completely lot dependent. Like where which way? Yeah, place? like like if you, for example, uh, want to face it south, south because of a. Uh, Sun, typically, if you can, but if you can't, you know, you got to face it another way. You got to face it maybe towards the street because that's where you're going to enter, right? So it's, it's going to completely depend on a lot that you have selected for it. So, um, in the city, a lot also includes the property line, so you know where your neighbor land starts, stops in your start, or the sidewalk are, like, <laughs> maybe you're responsible for the sidewalk. You usually step back, like you have in Detroit, like five feet from the property line, you can't build closer than that. Um, yeah, where your backyard is, where you side, where I am, drive, driveways, part of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, side plan from the very, like, ideally we'd have, um, 
set of templates we can work from typically like a construction set we don't have too much along those lines but as we document each build we can say okay here's a plan with setbacks and all that what's an example like let's maybe insert column right actually examples or templates examples or templates are useful Like ideally, for any step that we have here, we would pick off something that exists that's documented elsewhere that we don't have to do it. But a lot of the stuff will be will be custom, like how we build the walls. Well, we can't really bite that off somebody else because nobody builds this way. So, but maybe the foundation. There might be like okay, here's a slab foundation, shallow insulated footer. Let's say okay, here's some people that have done it. Maybe they have procedures and blueprints that we can borrow or adapt. So you always want to look at industry standard, what's already available, what uh, what materials already exist. Uh, so I, I would say like maybe examples or templates would be would be a good deal. Um, and here I would say, I don't know, do we include in this big spreadsheet um, technical design would be CAD or other other documents. Um, like templates would, would maybe maybe things that we find on the internet, but like the technical design, um, let's see, column right, template, uh, CAD, technical documents, that would be like technical design, that would be things like CAD or, or other things. Uh, on a site plan, it would be good to have something like a, uh, Probably like what I would see that is an Inkscape or just a Google Doc. Like the simplest would be Google Doc. Okay, we're just doing different icons and symbols, and we're drawing up the house plan that way, like trees, street, etc. I mean, it, uh, that would it would be nice to have a whole library of icons and things that we can pull off into a design. Like uh, you might see. Um, Site, like for example, site. If you Google site design icons, what do you get? Uh, I was looking more for symbols of things that go on a site. I'm not sure I'm getting much much of that. Yeah, I don't know. Like uh. The elements of a site, like so. Let's look at, for example, example site plan. Like, how do we do this? Question is, as we get going, how do we do this easy? Like, okay, so yeah, there you you can see images, um, site plan, things like that. Where I mean, it's going to be completely custom because the you know, this site plan, example site plan for one house. So that's kind of how it looks. And this, this stuff starts, that's, what is that? Does that look like uh, Sweet Home 3D? Is that Sweet Home 3D? I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, icons, like, okay, take a look at this. It's like tree, tree icons, uh, setbacks. Uh, I guess here, a template in FreeCAD would be a cool thing. Because uh, FreeCAD can do that. You can do those kinds of things. So probably the thing to aim for there would be, um, site plan workbench, yeah, that would be nice. So let's see examples of site plan. Should Google that, but that's the kind of the arc workbench. Maybe something similar. Not sure how much how much it has, so we can maybe look into that. How much is already available? I haven't really uh, parsed, but no, I didn't see anything too obvious right now as far as what we do have. Um, so maybe web search and then wiki. Wiki, there's a construction doc. We have some stuff about construction documents and wiki. Um, web. To link to this one. So 
open source, let's see in the wiki, open source architecture. Let me see what we find for under, um, architecture software um, yeah that's that's a that's a good page there uh, I mean pretty good you can do some of that in there there's a video there you can see how you this in the, in the yeah so I'm, I'm linking to that wiki page there uh, that's good to look at um, I would say so I'll highlight the columns like at the end of the day G. So step, time, cost. Those are the first three things we're going to look at. Um, down to the foundation. So I have a number actually. Overall time. Um, let's see where that was. That was under. I think data collection for foundation. I did, um, but I, I do have a number in my mind, and that is the first time we did the, the foundation, it was actually 42 hours, including everything, including four. So that's that's one number we do have, and uh, so maybe like some some foundation, including site prep. Um, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say in here site prep, plus foundation equals 42 hours one full week and I was like myself um, so there Gary little Katarina but yeah kept track of that like putting up stakes and all of that um, so it kind of mixes the foundation and side a little bit but it was side prep plus foundation in, that, in an example um, Typical workflow probably would be you build up, unless it's flat, you got to build it up to like a flat level. I mean, most sites are, I don't know, most sites, but here we weren't, we're not level. We, we had to level out. What that means, you, you're piling up a bunch of dirt, like with uh, using a bobcat or maybe trucks, if, if, if you need to uh, truck soil in. Uh, but that's typically, uh, uh, that's typically involved. And if we do it in a in a city, like if the lot, like you can look at the lot that we're currently examining, but I mean, that looks pretty flat from what I can remember. But if, if not, you have the cost of, of doing that step, which would be like a truckload of saw is like probably like 150 bucks. If you get talk about fill, um, oh, the deliveries. Like, yeah, which is like a full truck, which is like I don't know, like 12 tons or something like that. Just one of those big dump trucks. Um, can put that in as a potential cost. Um, insert row above so um, fill fill soil delivery. Uh, don't, you, don't you dig your trenches first before you before you, you do anything? Yeah, and then you you mark it out, you mark out your site. Yeah, yeah. Your trenches and then it's your trench. Yeah. We have uh, we have trenching for drainage. Yeah, you do that filling 
if you want to install things like drainage tubes, that would be a step where you, uh, I mean, it depends how, how the site is, but if you've got to fill in a lot of soil to make it level, then you'd, you'd work around, you know, you do the, perhaps do the trenches, trenching of, or drainage work after that. It's kind of part of the whole, whole process. It depends exactly on the site. Um, but, um, yeah. So let's let's just go into yeah. Let's let's start by uh, spraying. I mean, staining and spraying. I took data on that here. Um, <laughs> we got predictions on the wall panels of so the formula for what it should take. Um, this this kind of goes away, like the staining and painting part, because we're gonna, we're probably gonna get rid of that. It's not not effective to, to do it up front, so we're probably. Uh, while we have done that before, we probably want to get rid of that and put it like finished paint. Uh, maybe like, so there's interior work, there's finished paint work, finished painting. Um, paint, painting plus trim. I would expect that to be like, um, Prior to the trim, you paint the entire house, put on a trim. You might have to like paint the trim by hand or something like that. It's prob I mean, that's how we do it here. In our case, we would do like if we right now what I would do is I would uh, spray the entire house, block the windows. Like say say this house here, uh, we put on the siding, and we paint it once on the exterior, like you know few hours with a big paint sprayer and then uh, probably do the trim either by hand because the trim like around windows and maybe corners or something depends on the detail um, that's kind of the general process for interior we we wouldn't pre pre paint the panels as we know they get dirty we do it all all at once prob um, probably after uh, it depends. I mean, we haven't done the details of that. For Rosebud, I would do, like, if we have all the interior walls put up, at that point, we would spray it, uh, paint it prior to trim, and then trim it all up, probably. So I would say, um, my best guess at it right now would be uh, finish all the so paint all the interior walls at once prior to trim. Uh, I would say you go paint, trim, interior, trim. So it's like an interior, exterior. Um, paint exterior walls. Probably. Paint exterior, trim. And we can get into the details of that. Um, what do we have on a as the work on the interior? So I'm, I'm kind of skipping around here, but interior stairs. Or that should be something. Maybe uh, yeah, maybe stairs. I would say there's stairs. There is the interior wall panel. There's insulation. Let's break it by first floor. Go more, more columns. Insert. Go below. I would break into insulation. Um, we do it all at once, so it's like probably when we do that, I don't know if we break into one or two things. It might might just collapse into one. It's plumbing, electric, electrical. There's. Um, we should break it into kitchen and bathroom. So insert. Trim yep. Interior. Yeah. Trim. Do the interior trim. Yes. Write it down. Um. Plumbing, well, bathroom, plumbing, kitchen. I want to do kitchen and bathroom. Those are the, like the two big categories themselves. They have a lot of details. So let's do them separate. So we go. Um. We go back. 
bathroom and kitchen as their own categories. Kitchen has got a um, whole bunch. This little bathroom, tub, tub shower, install. There's major things like toilet, sink, sink. Um, we can call the electrical part as part of it, but. Um, Bathroom electrical. That's that's all. That all goes in electrical. We should go. Let's do interior electrical. Let's separate that. Um, so this thing. Let's do electrical as a whole section. I mean, electrical is quite a few details. So we'll go. So let's itemize that trench for power line. Um, that's what we would have to do. The company takes it from a transformer. They put that, they actually typically when you build, you would do the trench. They actually lay, lay the pipe to your breaker box. That's typically how it goes. So there's breaker install breaker box. Um, that's like starting the, the overall overall process. Um, insert. Install breaker box. Um, in a lot of places, you might have um, part of electrical would be like alarm system, like fire alarm. That's not, I don't, I'm not sure, I don't know if KC has it. Um, okay, install outlet boxes. That includes, that would be, um, let's separate it into like the standard 15, 20, and then, well, 15, 20, There's 15, 20, there's um, out of the boxes which are specialized, like say there's some 30, but we're trying to actually get away from 30, like the stove is the stove, like uh, induction, yeah, 30 amps. Induction cooktop right now takes 30, but we can split it into two 15s to, to get away from uh, having to run the specialized wire. We can do that because there's ways to do that. Um, but is that a building code thing or uh, expense thing? It's more for us. We're hacking everything for like easy buildability. But if you don't have to do, those are more expensive wirings and specialized outlets. So you got like one or a couple of them. So maybe a good idea is if we if we keep it all to fifteen twenty, which we can. So you can get a four four cooked up induction cooked up, or you can get two that have two. The two that have two actually run regular like twenty amp outlets. So you can get away from the specialized wiring, which is actually like this 10 gauge or like 10 gauge wiring, which the, the orange wire, it's like way more expensive. It's disproportionately expensive, whereas you can run standard wires uh, much more cheaply. We already have a bunch of that material, so, we have, so now we have less materials, less, less outlets, types, and stuff. So this is about part count reduction, too. Um, so I would say... Um, there's, there's GFCIs, we are required to have a lot of GFCI and AFCI. Arc, I, I think actually arc fault circuit interrupters since a few years ago, you have to have that in the breaker box, uh, like just about for everything. Um, install breaker box with AFCI protection. This is like recent stuff. GFCIs have to be in the wet areas like kitchen and bathroom, so that's kitchen bathroom wiring 
Hey, AFC, I saw the thing you flipped when, when the... Oh, uh, I think you, you flipped that too. Yeah, it's called Arc Fault. Is that... Circuit Interrupter. Mm -hmm. uh, when it flips, um, if this is in the breaker box... Yeah, I'm actually, I, I never did this, because we never... That's what I'm accustomed to back home. Like, or AFCI so or like GFCI. That I don't know, but it's, yeah. that's why I'm asking. Yeah. I uh, don't know the details. I, I think it's one of those things you flip, and they don't they don't go on a lot. It's it's like emergency stuff when breakers yeah, pop here and there. Yeah, you got something wrong. It was yeah. Over. Yep. Um, there's lighting, lighting boxes. I mean, yeah, lighting boxes install. There's um, exterior. We want to have an exterior outlet or two. That's not that's uh, quite desirable. I think it's actually required. You have to have like a couple. Yeah, I think it's actually required. So exterior outlets. Um, no, I'm not sure about outlets, but lights, exterior lights, like door light, is actually required in a lot of places. So, but exterior outlets are convenient if you want to. Yeah, especially as the car ports. Yeah. And whether you want to keep the heater on in the car. Yep. Serve a few more. Um, so exterior light, um, like a motion sensitive light would be a cool thing, so that when you're walking into the house, it just does it by itself and then it turns off. Um, motion, motion detect. That would be another aspect. Um, There's a power meter that we also install. It depends on the company. Some power companies might install their own power meters, but we can also have, we can come to the company saying, here's our power meter, here's our breaker box. We need, uh, they connect to the power meter if we're using a power meter, and that's we're off grid in an off grid scenario. Uh, so we trench it, they connect. Um, so before the breaker box, we want to have we want to have install power meter. Um, so for that, you need things like power meter. Um, what else on an electrical part? There's you can break it by first floor, second floor. Uh, there's wall there's wall switches like there's two th it's called three way switches where if you go up the stairs, you can turn the light off at the bottom of the stairs or at the top of the stairs. Uh, Three-way switches. That will have, at least at the at the door steps, uh, possibly somewhere else. Like so switch you can access from different points. Yeah, so if you're going down the stairs, you can turn on the light, but you can turn off the light from below. You don't want to have to go up the stairs okay, to yeah. turn it off again. Um, so three-way switch. Yeah, PV is that. If that's in the standard package, then that should be added to um, Yeah, but let's break it into, yeah, so let's do PV. Are we are looking at PV. No, let's go to a separate separate line item, uh, PV system. Because, yeah, we do want to we do want to offer this standard um, with the idea that we can prepare a whole low-energy electrical system that requires only a few motorcycle batteries. This, as a feasible option, like using super efficient, like this fridge strategy where we turn it off at night and use the induction cooktops and heat pumps and other energy saving means so that we really run primarily off the seven kilowatt photovoltaics. That's a huge, I mean, I'd get that. I, I definitely would sign up for that. There's probably a you know, decent, maybe a decent market of people, probably not mainstream yet because most people are not going to be like, oh, I'm going to not run four gallon per minute 15 minute hot showers because they want that <laughs> but i'll do a an efficient shower but a smaller um, smaller water heater system that's still electric but yeah like we have that whole strategy so pv system would be um pv panels uh, so say yeah. Well, yeah. But the heating system. Yeah. Um, three-way wa wall switch means you can turn it on and off from two different positions. Okay. Yeah. yeah, two different locations. 
um, PV panels. Um, there's DC breakers. There's an inverter. And we can immediately, there's two ways to do it, but right now the only thing we can do is just the off grid version with the on grid. That's grid tie con inverters and dealing with the power companies, which we, we don't have experience with that yet. So we can definitely do the off grid electrical systems, which are with a transfer switch, meaning, so transfer switch, where um, wherever you're able to, to have a system that operates on a transfer switch, I'm sure it's like, depends on local jurisdiction, like local codes, but you just switch between the on grid and off grid. And that should be legal everywhere because the danger there is, is like you're back feeding power into the grid yeah. in a grid intertie situation. But with this thing, you're just selecting between one or the other. So that we should actually, that should be perhaps part of the, the mainstream package, the official package, the standard package could have that. We just switch between the two and that way people can use as much of the off grid as possible. But if they want to just jump back in, um, or like they leave the house and you know they want to keep it heated with a heat pump all night or whatever, like whatever, they can do that and they have ample backup power. Yeah. So transfer switch. Um, there's batteries, charge controllers. There's uh, uh, I mean there's definitely wiring the, the part that connects wiring from the rooftop to the utility panel. There's a special utility panel. We'll have like two of them. One is like for all the uh, so that like the DC um, electric box. So where we have all the components. So either like a shelf or a compartment like a panel where we have all those components there. Electric panel, um, wiring from roof to the panel. And then uh, into the regular breaker box um, through the transfer switch. Um, power meter, breaker box with AFCI. Um, so in electrical you have uh, lighting and so, but that's like, I don't know, I'll put in, I would put in like all this, once electrical is connected, like the finish, I think the finish finish detail after you paint is the lights, like that's like way after like installing light sockets, if you have any like overhead lamps, mm -hmm. that's like all final, uh, final interior, let's see, um, painting and trim. I would put in, uh, so there's interior as in like, interior trim, like the finish, I'm going to put a separate one for, there's painting and trim, but even after you, you paint, there's like finishing stuff, so like interior finish, and then exterior finish, so uh, let's do two characters, because uh, landscaping outside is going to be another part too. Um, insert. So ex so interior fin. Um, interior finishing. So I would say. Exterior finishing. So that's like landscaping and things like that. And what do we do for that? So, um, I would say like there's some, probably some gravel around foundation. Insert. There will probably be some plants. So, so uh, some some uh, baseline of shrubbery or edible landscape that we plant with it, um, and probably like 
probably some evergreens are good like in a climate like this they, they make it look green in the middle of winter that's that's pretty attractive uh, I mean we can have all kinds of options but like, if we specify like one or a few things uh, like evergreens like Arbor Vitae or something like that um, there's there'll be things like yeah like instead of the typical lawn like, I don't think we're we want to do too much lawn like more maybe like yeah garden or raised beds or other things uh, I mean it depends uh, or like exterior finishing should also be included in decks right? yeah right okay so yeah I forgot the deck because we do have a deck and then there's a canopy over the door oh yeah uh -huh. um, we're not there yet yeah. to, to do that, but maybe, uh, yeah. But would you put it uh, different category, or? Yeah, that would be its whole system. So it will be like the aquaponic greenhouse, uh, which let's yeah. let's stick to the base thing, things first. But uh, the deck, there's the canopy on the door. There's actually a driveway, right? How do we finish the driveway? Um, this is what we got for for driveway geo grid. That's what I want for the live track. This, so this, and you fill it, this with gravel, so it's permeable, and you retain the gravel for a longer time. So something like this, um, geo grid. That'll be a, that was the current plan. I mean, you, you could do all kinds of things, but I was I was going to do for this seat home too. Uh, do geo grid. Um, Let's do materials. Let's do the third column as materials. Um, Geo grid there. Something um, that doesn't cause more water runoff. That water actually sinks 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 in. So, so it's like a circulation kind of. Yeah, it's a thing that. Well, no, it's a plastic. It's a plastic thing. It's just a plastic grid. And you put gravel in it, and then um, see. I mean, it looks like this bunch. Of, we have it right back there in the, in the box. Um, but yeah, you put gravel in it, and, and it's a neat, neat shape. You could, you have to put like a trim edge to it. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like this is kind of stuff. Like look at that. That's uh, you got oh, yeah, like yeah, grass yeah. in it. You can have gravel in it. And it could, could look quite attractive. Um, but does it like, look the uh, border? border? It doesn't include the border, so you have to do a border to it. That's a detail to, to think to to finish something like uh yeah like this uh, what do you call it? I mean uh, whatever kind of uh, what do they call it like landscape edging or something yeah, that you put next to it. Temporary thing, or is it goes no, over? it's it's not a temporary thing. Yeah. It's uh, intended for long. But yeah, I was thinking about it. 3D, 3D printed this kind of stuff. That's a cool, cool 3D printed thing. Um, yeah. But on the inside, uh, let's talk about more things. Um, interior. Plumbing is its own thing. So plumbing. Well, plumbing is actually. Um, it is its own thing, but let's I itemize the things that go in it. We've got the main water line trench. And you can't do it the way you do it, like you'd think when you're trenching, you can do that with electrical. You can't really do that because you gotta you can't run water lines and and power line trenches. So you have to do a separate water line trench when you're connecting the water 
to assist them to the house uh, if you're going from city utilities. Yeah. <coughs> Here you have to go three feet below below the frost line. Three feet. Three feet. No, here it's only three feet. The soft line? Yeah. So you got to go below three. Um, that's how you get it. Then there's a manifold. Sorry, is that yeah. three feet below the frost line? No, oh. three feet below the top of the oh, surface. Okay. Because um, the frost line is about that much. Um, there's uh, main water manifold that's uh so there's like shut off <coughs> and distribution like uh, connections to a bunch of uh, distribution so connections to basically a bunch of different water lines that we have in a house uh, but that's just in the kitchen and bathroom and then kind of connects to the upper bathroom there um, there's the all this plumb, the pre, the rough plumbing. That's not rough plumbing. The rough plumbing goes into the, the foundation. Um, when you do, after you do the stub plumbing is right there. That is uh, rough plumbing. So let's call it rough plumbing. There's also a leak test. Like after you install, you you got actually. You gotta test it to show that you can hold pressure, air pressure. So you gotta basically put, cap it and run air pressure through it. And then you have to show that, oh, it holds 10 PSI for like your rough plumbing, which is the waste. It runs, I think like, it's like five or 10 PSI. It has to hold that for like a half hour or an hour or something. From like the bathroom to the, the connection to the main line? Mm -hmm. You actually gotta cap it yeah. and put a little air fitting on it and do that. Uh, so pressure test <coughs> is involved there. Um, we should actually, we can still do that here. We actually haven't done that. Uh, but if it doesn't work, then we'll, um, no, it has to work. It's it, it will work. Um, <laughs> but we can do that. It's, it's interesting. You have pressure gauge and a compressor, things like that, and some fittings. The caps. Um, so, do we have foundation forms? Do we have squaring, squaring off foundation, which is which is before the forms? So you have gravel, vapor barrier, we got rebar, what else you got in there? The ties. Rebar plus ties, ties and, and chairs. Level reference for concrete pour. Um, that would be when you do the fill soil delivery. Trenching is probably like you know after um, all trench. So level. Do we have level? Level with tractor. Um, plus laser. I mean, yeah, you could you're probably be using laser laser level. Uh, typically, is like a 
when you see people working out, one person like holds a stick, or like the bulldozers, they have those things on t on them that actually operator actually reads the lasers. Really? Yeah. Have you ever seen? Um, if it's a CNC tractor <laughs> or like an automated tractor, I don't know if the modern ones are automated like that, but what they do have is those. You see those, like they have the front cylinders and these tubes that go up. They're actually, they got like a, like some kind of, some system, uh, which they, they may have like an exterior laser somewhere else. Like say there's a laser on a field and those detectors give, give the operator the information. Okay, where are you in terms of height, like at that point in time? So there's these two detectors on the front. That's why, I, uh, I don't know much about it. I haven't done that, but, um. Uh, that will be the, the cool way to do it, so otherwise it's like you, you're on your machine, you check your level on the laser, you kind of look at it again, you maybe have your stick with your detector on it and you see how high you are, then you keep working it, you go into your your machine again, keep going and kind of go back and forth, but ideally you have all that info in a cab, so you've got your open source detector, so the same thing, like they have this tube which wherever like the laser is hitting I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how how that thing works but one way I could see it's like this long photo diode thing array where wherever the laser is it just reads it so, you know a little Arduino device with a bunch of light sensors and then you have a display that shows okay I'm at this height compared to the reference you know mm -hmm. or whatever whatever I got so mm -hmm. some so start open sourcing this surveying equipment that would be cool and then connect it to the tractor logic where you actually now automating that where uh, the tractor drives itself and it it lowers so the logic behind it would be it lowers and heightens its blade depending on the height so if you if you want to if you need to take down some earth while you lower your blade you go on you're basically going like back and forth across this flat plot of land you lower, or that's the things you can control. You can control how high your blade is to how far, and a blade angle to how high you're doing. And so in this instance, you just lower it to go deeper. You make it go higher to go shallower, and you just keep going back and forth. That would be like the ba base level logic. You're just going back and forth, and you get more advanced from there. But I don't know. Just made it up. Automated. Automated leveling. I mean, I'm. The guys who have the advanced, now these you're talking about like these multi hundred thousand dollar uh, bulldozers that would have this kind of functionality, I'm sure, but uh, we can do it for five data. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's cool. 1832. You guys got to go to, go to Munch. Talk yeah. Oh, that's yeah. No, you, got, you guys got to go. So we can keep going through these steps. But uh, we want to start reviewing the videotape and looking at, uh, first of all, write down all the steps and kind of going through it all and mm -hmm. talking through it but get really good understanding of what they all are and all the time it takes. So yeah, let's continue tomorrow. And uh, that's it. Um, before we go, uh, maybe sometime we could look at the uh, application. Uh, I don't know if you want to be involved in that. Too. We'll talk about the uh, training these days. But you, got, you guys are leaving at 6.30 though. The bus is leaving at 6.30. Go away. Uh, we're doing a Taco Tuesday with Paul Espas. Oh, right. So Jeff okay. is taking us. Yeah, you, got, you guys got to go. Okay. But are you yeah, talking about how to apply for a training visa? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. For me to help or, or if I need it? To yeah, if you want to. Yeah, that would be interesting. Because uh, um, uh, what I do, I'll, I'll send out the, the actual application from the I-129. Mm -hmm. Cool. And just have a look at it and try to figure it out. So